forget and he's already done too much for me to turn back ain't about to turn back Woo! glory hallelujah well praise the lord praise the lord amen well i thank god for uncle gene amen but us us martin brothers we got to stick together you know amen he he's the uh, the tall dark and handsome martin brother and i'm just a handsome martin brother amen <laughs> hallelujah we've been coming doing these camp meetings about four years now praise god and i'll tell you it was summer and winter and sometimes in between but i thank god for invitation from reverend gene martin to allow prophet woody martin come and preach in this uh, winter camp meeting the day after christmas hallelujah got a tremendous crowd here tonight to worship the Lord and to praise God and magnify the Lord and I want you to just let God have his way in this service tonight years ago up in the hills of Kentucky there's a the brothers died he's already going to be with the Lord he wrote a song entitled ain't no grave going to hold my body down I want you to listen to this song you can be seated if you like Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down Ain't no grave Gonna hold I'm gonna get up out of that ground <laughs> Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body I'm gonna get up out of that ground. Ain't no grave. Take me to the other 
you know that you know that you know that you know when you know and you know her King Jesus I know you hear me when I pray And the Holy Ghost did fall, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. Down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send an angel by my way. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Every day, every day, King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send an angel by my way. Listen, well, 
I've been in the valley. If I reach that mountain top, I'm looking for that city. Lord, I keep talking, Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send an angel by my way. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Every day, every day, every day. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll send an angel by my way. He's been in serving the Lord 20 plus years. Raise your hand. 20 or more. How many have been serving the Lord 30 or more years? Raise your hand. How many have been serving the Lord four, 35 or more years? My goodness, look at these hands. How many have been serving the Lord 40 plus years? Raise your hand. Well, you know what? If you've just served Him one day, and by the way, here today, as we were setting up equipment, I know I'm making a testimony here in a few minutes. God saved a young lady here today as we was ministering and prayed for her. And she's sitting here tonight. God saved her and delivered her from drugs today as we was here working in the church, setting some equipment up. But if you just got saved today, or if you've been serving God for 40 years, we're almost home. I said, we're almost home. Look at your neighbor and say, you know we're almost home? For many long years, I've traveled this road. I'm weary and tired of carrying this load. So often I'm tempted by Satan. But I'm too near my home to turn back now. Oh, almost home. We're almost home. I know that my race is almost run. Thank God troubles and trials have already come, but I can't turn back now, for I'm almost home, as I stand at the river, that homeland I see, with the beautiful mansion. Prepared there for me. Just a few days to labor, then I'll go across. For I know what awaits me will be worth the cost. Oh, almost home. We're almost home. Thank God. and trials I've already come but I can't turn back now for I'm almost home help me sing that chorus oh almost home we're almost home thank God I know that my race run through troubles and trials we've already come but I can't turn back now 
and fire have already come but I can't turn back now for I'm almost home we are almost home we're almost home I know that my race is almost run through troubles and trials and trials have already come but I can't turn back now, turn back now. I'm almost home hallelujah Reverend Gene Martin hallelujah look at your neighbor say we are almost home I'm gonna sing. I was raised on that music. Say what? I was raised on that music. You like that down home? I like that. I was raised on that kind of music. Ever since I was a child, I like that. Now, make you feel it. And see, you just get it, 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 it just dance. Oh, you know, it's a, oh. We're almost home. We're almost home. Why don't you stand and help us sing? I know that my race. Run through troubles and trials. And trials. I've already come. I've already come. But I can't turn back now. I can't turn back now. I'm almost home. I stand at the river. To labor, then I'll go across. For I know what awaits me will be worth the call. Everybody join and say, Almost home. Oh, almost home. We're almost home. I know that my race is all. Through troubles and trials, I've already come. But you know what? I can't turn back now. I'm almost home. Oh, almost home. We're almost home. Glory. I know that my race. and trials I've already come but I can't turn back now for I'm almost home clap your hands for Jesus come on clap your hands for Jesus Somebody say, faith works, and Jesus never fails. Faith in the Father, and faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost, victories are won. Demons will tremble. 
the sinner away. Faith in my Jesus can anything change. Faith when my spirit is discouraged and weak. When the friends, the ones I really trusted, they turn against me and speak. They to be happy when I'm falsely accused. Faith in my Jesus when I'm sorely abused. I've got faith in the Father and faith in the Son, faith in the Holy Ghost, victories are won, demons will tremble, the sinner away, faith in my Jesus, can anything change, listen to this, faith when the family is sick and dead faith when the message comes your loved one is dead faith to be happy when nothing seems right faith Faith to believe that everything's going to be right. I've got faith in the Father and faith in the Son. Faith in the Holy Ghost. Victories are won. Demons will tremble. The sinner away. Faith in my Jesus. Can anything change? If you believe that, say amen. Amen. I want to thank the Lord tonight. We have our staff organist with us, Brother John Drennan, playing the organ. Amen. And my son, David Martin, you've heard a lot about him. David Martin playing the drum. Amen. Give the, the Woody Martin evangelistic team a praise tonight, if you would, please. Hallelujah. I tell you, when the Martin boys team up, we, we come a-shouting and the devil better watch out. Amen. The Martin boys are coming and the devil is running. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for being here tonight. If you have a Bible, I want you to open your Bible to Psalms 50 and verse 23. Praise brings the victory. Everybody say, praise brings the victory. God's given me a word for this man over here. God's given me a word for this sister here. Don't leave this service tonight. Don't walk out on your blessing. Reverend Gene Martin said earlier, said God gave him one word for the people tonight to rejoice. I think what I say tonight will correlate with what he has spoken prophetically to us as the body. And I'm preaching a message tonight entitled, Praise Brings the Victory. Somebody say, Praise Brings the Victory. Psalms, the 50th chapter, the Psalm of Asaph. Whosoever, verse 23, Whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me. 
And to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Whosoever offereth praise glorifies me. I want you to think about it. the person who are you are a whosoever. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am a whosoever. And Asaph says, whosoever offereth praise glorifieth the Lord. Are you listening? Anyone who is a whosoever can praise the Lord. I want you to notice it didn't say whosoever goes to Africa. Huh? He didn't say whosoever goes to Africa glorifies me, even though the missionaries that go to Africa are glorifying God. But we, we, we come to the conclusion sometimes to do something for God, we've got to go to Africa or we've got to go to India or we've got to go to the mission field and thank God for that if God tells you to do that. But if you really want to glorify God, just start praising Him. If you really want to do something for God, just start praising. Whosoever praiseth the Lord glorifies me, saith the Lord. Somebody say amen. In this expression is the desire to glorify God by vocalizing praise. A deep fulfillment comes to our heart when we begin to praise the Lord. I found out a long time ago you can praise more out of God than you can beg out of Him. Oh, I can't get no witnesses here tonight. I said you can praise more out of God than you can beg out of Him. And the latter part, and to him that ordered his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. The word conversation here means the behavior and manner of life, the way you carry yourself, the behavior and the manner of your life. Now, God can't bless you if you ain't doing nothing. God can't bless you if you ain't living nothing. This blow hot, blow cold, in one day and out the next, is not going to get the job done. Honey, God is looking for a people, a, a, a holy people, a sanctified people that's not ashamed to magnify and praise the Lord and a people that's not ashamed of their conversation to glorify and praise the Lord. If it's in the mall, if it's in the church, if it's going down I-75, honey, if you're on the street corner, God is looking for a people that's not ashamed to praise His name. Whosoever glorifies that person that offers praise is the person that glorifies God. If you want to glorify God, just start praising Him. Makes no difference what people say. You praise God anyway. The conversation means the behavior or the manner of life. That's the life that you live. And that's the life that we live every day of our life. And I want you to notice in the latter part of that verse, he has offered his conversation aright. God says, I will show the salvation of God. God says, in your conversation, in the way that you live, he, the Lord, will show you salvation. His salvation. Salvation means deliverance. Salvation means forgiveness of sin. Salvation means prosperity. In the Hebrew and the Greek, the, the Greek word is so-so, and it has a threefold meaning, and it means deliverance or salvation. It means health, and it means prosperity. Honey, I want you to know, God said, if you make your conversation right, I will show you my salvation. And your loved ones that are bound by alcohol, your loved ones that are bound by drugs like this young lady was over here today, God said, I'm going to show you how I can reach down in the gutter of sin and pull that person out and break the powers of sorcery and alcohol and drugs, whosoever whosoever offer praise glorifies me saith the Lord 
Somebody say, I'm a whosoever, and I'm going to glorify God. Not only am I going to glorify God, I'm going to praise God, and I'm not going to be ashamed to glorify God. I got gas one time in my car. I was just kind of chewing the spiritual could, just kind of praising the Lord. And I got out of the car, and I, was, and I don't ask for forgiveness. I was talking in tongues. I was praising the Lord and got that gas and that attendant. He said, are you always that happy when you get gas? Honey, that lets me know you can praise God when you're getting gas. That means, uh, t tell me you can praise God at the 7-Eleven store. Hello, somebody. Anyone who makes a sacrifice of praise glorify God. And that means if you feel like it, if you don't feel like it, if you worked hard, you come in here with a big old juicy hallelujah. Don't you bring no dead praise to the house of God. You bring in here a wiggly, squirming, alive, dudamus. Praise the Lord. And this Bible says if you offer praise unto God, you would glorify the Lord. Don't be ashamed. The praise Jehovah. Praise glorifies the Lord. And those that praise the Lord, praise brings a victory. Brother Allen taught us years ago in Psalm 78, they, the children of Israel said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? And Israel forgot salvation. They remembered not the works that God did for them in the past. And invariably, most Christians are that way today. Lord, what have you done for me lately? Can I be very candid with you? I believe in miracles. I believe in healing. I believe in prosperity. I believe in God can raise the dead. I believe in God can do anything. But if I never see another visible miracle with these eyes that God gave me, him saving my old rotten soul in June of 1959 is enough for me to praise him until he comes against me. Somebody say amen. Whosoever offers praise glorifies me. Honey, I'm not going to forget Honey, I am not going to forget. How could I ever forget what the Lord's done for me? He's been too good to me for me not to praise him. Somebody say praise brings the victory. They forgot. They forgot the hand of the Lord after God fed them supernaturally, after God clothed them supernaturally. They forgot. After God gave them miracle water from a miracle rock, they forgot the hand that brought them forth. I'm telling you, praise brings the victory. Psalms 22 and verse 3 says, God inhabits the praise of Israel. God lives in the hearts of his people. This tabernacle that you have, it may be five foot eight, 180. It may be five foot 10, 300 and plenty. But this is where God resides. This is the reservoir. Your body is a reservoir of where he lives. God dwells in the praise of his people. Your praise creates a throne to which he comes in and sits on the throne of your heart. And your praise creates an atmosphere that will change the elements around you. I can't get a witness here tonight. I said your praise changes the atmosphere around about you to where God will bring you out of the valley, where God will bring you out of the mully grubs, where God will bring you and set you on the mountaintop to where you can praise him when all hell breaks loose against you. You'll find a great old big juicy hallelujah to offer unto the Lord. Somebody say he's right about it. Our praise exalts God in the public place. 
I don't care what people think about me. You shouldn't care what people think about you. If they ain't putting no gas in your car and putting no bread on your table, what you studying them for? I'm not ashamed to praise him in the public place. Somebody say amen. amen. Knox translation. I read the different translations. Knox translation says this. Anybody who praises me prepares the way for me to manifest my victory. Anybody who praises God prepares the way for me, God, to manifest my victory. Now, you don't have no victory in yourself, and you can't live the Christian life yourself. I don't know how many people say, Preacher, I just can't live it. I, just, I can't live it either. I can't live, right? That's the reason he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You can't live it in yourself. But when he's in you, when you praise God, as Knox said, that those that praise the Lord prepares the way. John the Baptist prepared the way of the Lord, said, I'm not the one, but there's one coming mighty and I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Knox says, those that praise the Lord prepares the way for God to manifest his victory. And it's apparent that you can't work your problems out. If you could have, you'd have done it a long time ago. So why don't you just turn it over to Jesus and start praising him? Even though you don't have the victory, you'll start praising him because praise will bring the victory. Somebody say amen. Now let's turn over here to Second Chronicles. I could quote this, but I want to show you something. Jehoshaphat was surrounded by three kings. He was outnumbered ten men to one. The odds were astronomical. And there was no way in the natural that he could get out of the dilemma that he was in. Have you ever been there? Has your back ever been against the wall that you didn't know what you was going to do? Amen. Bill collectors on your door. That son or daughter in school has gotten rebellious. Amen. They've called you to the office several times and say the next time we're going to expel him or her. Amen. And your back is against the wall and you don't know what to do. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Sometimes when you don't know what to do, that's when God is preparing you to get the greatest miracle. You're on the verge of the greatest miracle that you've ever received in your life. Jehoshaphat said, Lord, I don't know what to do. First, he was afraid. That's the way the enemy operates is in fear. You know, if you have a pain in your body, you automatically think, oh, God, it's cancer. You know, you can have a hamburger with double onions and get heartburn. Oh, Lord, it's cancer. Amen. You're thinking the worst. Hello, somebody. Amen. Fear is like the opposite of faith. Fear will drive faith away. Come on, somebody. Jehoshaphat, he feared. He didn't know what to do. And when he didn't know what to do, he did have enough sense to fast and to seek God. I'm telling you that praise brings the victory. When you get to the place, you don't know what to do. And if you've ever been there, you didn't know what to do. Set your face like a flint. Seek the face of God. Turn that plate over and say, I'm not going to move until I hear from heaven when I get my answer. I'm coming out of this valley. Hallelujah. God's going to give me the victory. Watch this. I'm going to condense this. The Lord told Jehoshaphat to appoint some singers. He didn't say get your spears and your swords. He said get you some singers. Get you some praisers. Get you a praise team. Hello, somebody. And 
2 Chronicles 20 and 20, they rose early and went forth in the wilderness to, to peak up. And they went forth. Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. Judah means what? Hear me, you supposed to be praising people. But how can you praise God when you're in a strange land? How can you praise God when you've lost your job? How can you praise God when your wife's sick? How can you praise God when you got a son or daughter on drugs? Can I get a witness? How can you praise God when all hell breaks loose against you and you've got 10 million demons screaming in your ear? It's no use. Why don't you quit? Honey, that's the time to praise the Lord. Jehoshaphat said, Hear me, Judah. Believe in the Lord your God, so you shall you be established. If there ever was a time that people needed to be established, and that word in the Hebrew means if you believe in the Lord, you'll be safely kept. God will safely keep you. If you believe in the Lord, you'll be established. The reason so many people, after they leave the walls of this church and face the cold, hostile world out there is they're not established in the Word of God, and the devil comes along with the first little boo, and they fall apart. But if you'll keep your feet under God's table and eat the Word of God and be nourished on the Word of God, you'll be so fat spiritually, you won't go through the devil's sifter when he starts sifting you. He said, believe the Lord God, you shall be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. By believing the man of God, or woman of God, the prophetess, you will be prosperous, or you will prosper. God said he wished above all things you would prosper and be in health even as your soul doth prosper. It is the will of God for you to prosper. Now watch this. When he had consulted with the people, verse 10, 21 rather, verse 21, he appointed what? Singers, not warriors, not gladiators, he appointed what? Some sissy singers. Not the sissy kind. He appointed some singers. And can I say this? When you get in this Christian walk, honey, you better get your war clothes on. You had better get your war clothes on because you're on the battlefield for the Lord. He appointed singers. Everybody say he appointed singers. And I want you to notice he didn't pay them to sing. Oh, help me, Jesus. Let me move right along. Everybody works for God. Now they want to get paid. He appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of wholeness as they went before the enemy and to say, Here's, he said, this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to sing. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing, verse 22, and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the enemy, those three kings that rose against Jehoshaphat, the Amorites, the Moabs, and the Syrians, they came against Judah, they came against the praisers, and they were smitten. As they, the children of Israel, were praising God, their enemies destroyed one another. Unlike in the church today, Christians are destroying one another by backbiting, Help me, Holy Ghost. I better, I better let that alone. You don't want to hear that. Amen. Somebody's got a good testimony or sings a good song in the choir, and they'll say, didn't Bessie Mae sing good today? Yeah, but you don't know what I know. <laughs> why, why, why is something wrong? Well, I don't know, but this is what I heard. And the first thing you know, you're destroying somebody's testimony. 
You're a backbiter. You're not a praiser. You're a gossiper. You're a destroyer. You're not a peacemaker. You're a I'm preaching praise brings the victory, not gossip. Some people's tongue is long as this cord. We, we, we need to lay their tongue on the altar and get it sanctified. Hello, Holy Ghost. Uh, you know I'm right about it. Amen. You can come home from church from a good service and the phone will ring. And it's the bear of bad news, gloom, and it's there. And they go into their spiel. Oh, God, I got to move on. Amen. If you can't say something that edifies, and even us ministers, when we preach a rebuking message, it edifies the body of Christ because you got to get the dirt out of the body hallelujah you got to get the filth out of the body before we can grow spiritually mm, 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 mm. He, he they set up ambushments against themselves and killed one another verse 24 i'm in second chronicles 20 and verse 24 judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness they looked unto the multitude and behold there were dead bodies fallen to the earth and how many escaped how many escaped none of them got away and Judah was praising God and while they were praising the Lord their enemies fought each other and destroyed and killed each other while they were praising God. I ask you a question. Would you rather praise God or argue with somebody? Would you rather praise God or chew the rag with the devil all day long? Come on. None escaped. Somebody say none escaped. None escaped. Now watch this. And when Jehoshaphat, verse 25, and his people came away to take away the spoil, when they came to take away the spoil of them, because in, in, in Bible days, when someone was defeated in battle, the victorious ones would go out and get the goodies, the spoil. And Melchizedek, uh, Abraham, paid tithes to Melchizedek on the spoil of the kings that he defeated in Bible days. This was even before the law of God. Amen. Tithing was before the law. Amen. Some of you people got such a stingy spirit, you wouldn't give a nickel to watch a gnat eat a bell of hay. Now, honey, that's worth watching. Everybody say, tithing is right. Say it again. Tithing is right. Say it one more time. Tithing is right. Because when you do, you come under the covering of God where the Lord says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake if you'll bring your tithe and your offering and prove me now here with Seth the Lord. I will open you the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. There won't be room enough to receive it. Now, watch this. After none escaped, Jehoshaphat, they go out there and they're getting the spoil. And they found in abundance. Somebody say abundance. John 10 and 10, the thief comes to what? And what? And what? But Jesus says, but I am come. That you what? And have it how? You see here this word abundance, A-B-U-N, and the last five letters is dance. D-A-N-C-E. Abundance. God will give you so much abundance that you'll have a dance with your abundance. Woo! Somebody say praise brings the victory. Now I want you to watch this. They were in the valley of Berekah. Somebody say Bereka. B-E-R-A-C-A-A-H. Bereka. Now watch this. Watch this. When they go out, 
They found riches with the dead bodies. Watch. Here's what they found. Precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days gathering the spoils. It was so much. What, look here, verse 26. When they assembled in themselves in the valley of Berechah, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Berechah, even to this day. Now, in the Hebrew, the word Berechah means blessing. Somebody say blessing. The Valley of Berechah means blessing or prosperity. This is my valley. I will not complain. I know it's good for me to suffer pain and agony. I say pig whistles. And good for you to suffer pain and agony. Jesus suffered the pain and the agony in the garden for you. Jesus suffered the pain and the agony for you. Now, Psalm 65 and 13. Psalm 65. Can we hold our place there? I'm going to come right back to the Valley of Berechah. Psalm 65. I could quote it, but I want to take my time. Can I take my time? Amen. Psalm 65. Lord, God, help me find Psalms. I was already there. Psalm 65 and 13. And I want to show you something. Psalm 65 and verse... 13. It's, it talks about the valley. Psalm 65 says the pastors, Psalm 65 and verse 13, the pastors are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered over with what? Corn means prosperity. Corn means blessing. Corn means harvest. Corn means a overproduction of produce or vegetables. Now, I, we're, we're in the valley, the valley of Berecha. And he said, the corn, the valley is going to be covered over with corn. And they shout for what? And they also sing. Where? In my valley. The Lord says, when you get in the valley... Shout for joy and sing unto the Lord. Now, when the Lord, they went down to the valley of Berecha, and they go down there, act like you're dead. Here, here here's, here's a ring. Man, man, he gets the Academy Award. Hey, Amen. Here's some gold. He's got a little gold. Can we get this? No, you ain't getting my ring. Because this ring is real. This ain't no cubic Z. You ain't getting my Rolex either. I had a man ask me, he said, if Jesus was here today, you think he'd wear a Rolex? I said, yes, because I'd let him have mine. <laughs> Hello. Jesus became poor. That Woody Martin, through his poverty, Jesus' poverty, could become rich. And they go out there and they see the dead bodies. Didn't the Bible say the dead bodies and none escaped? Israel, Judah goes out and they start picking up the jewels. Said, you ain't going to need this where you're going. Reach down and get some gold. You ain't going to need this gold where you're going. And they started stripping those dead bodies and started getting the gold in the valley of blessing. Sometimes your valley, God's got a blessing in the valley. God's got your prosperity in the valley. And here they are. They got so much gold 
it took them three days to gather it up and it was so much it was more than they could carry out that valley I'm talking about jewels diamonds precious stone more than enough he's Jehovah Jireh he's Jehovah Shalom he's Jehovah the Lord will provide he's a God that's more than enough so look at your neighbor and say the next time you get in a valley don't worry about it God's going to bring you out and say not only is he going to bring you out he's going to bring you out with prosperity hey hey the Bible says there was three days gathering the goodies the spoil it took them three days and it was more than they could carry he's a God that's more than enough but you know the reason they got their prosperity they praised God while the enemy was around them come on somebody they praised the Lord while they were surrounded they were outnumbered ten to one that's the reason I'm saying praise brings the victory. God inhabits the praise. Oh, God. I see the healing light over that lady mother. I see the healing light. Oh, I looked over, and I've got more to preach, but I've got to stop. Because I see the healing light of Jesus over you. Shabbatai. Mm. Stand to your feet, Mother. Stand to your feet. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. I got to get down there to her. Clap your hands for the Lord. When, when I looked over here, and I saw you I started to turn away but as I turned I, I saw the healing light of Jesus come over your head hot on on my shot is this your mother what's what the doctor say if they're wrong her neck she has surgery and she has um it's it's she can't even move her neck your spine she can tell me better than you and sir uh, on the cousin of the spine I've had two surgeries spine uh, operations when I looked hold on my shanta mm, I saw the healing light right at the base of your neck glory and going down through your neck and your spine burning in my head. right now right now you got burning in your head right now right now so if if that burning stopped that would be a pretty good sign that you were healed is that right that's i believe oh hey shababa mm. mm. i lay my hand on your head and i pray over i curse the burning i command it to stop in the name of Jesus oh God I feel something mm. be healed in the name of Jesus I hear the Lord saying mother I know you're a senior citizen and you're up in years but I hear God says you ain't about to run out of gas 82 yeah God says you ain't gonna check out yet I'm not ready. I won't amen amen Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hold it up. Hold it up. I want you to move your neck around. Hey. One side to the other. <laughs> Do like those athletes, those football players when the woman move your head. Oh, glory. Thank you. Now do like this, forward and backwards. Now where's the pain? Just burning in me. Just the burning still there, but the pain's gone. We're gonna get the rest of it, right? Right there. Don't you worry about your little hat now. Amen. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
God, in the name of Jesus, stop this burning. Heal mother, 82 years of age. She's a woman. Oh, God, there it is. Th that's it, Mom. Whoa, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. My God, 82 years of age, and she was slain in the Holy Ghost. Come here, Michelle. Now, this is not a word of knowledge. We is at the church this afternoon setting up for the service tonight. Come here, sis, and send this your sister. Amen. And I prayed for you today about 1 o'clock, didn't I? How much money did you give me? No. That's what I thought. So that knocks that in the head. Well, he charges people to pray for him. The devil told him, you go to hell for telling lies. Did you eat anything today? Did you go? You didn't eat? No. Say what? She ate some French fries. Some French fries? When you came today, and I, do you care if I tell them what you used to be? Yeah. You don't mind if I share with the people? You used to be on drugs. For 10 years, right? You couldn't keep nothing on your stomach. And you came today. Your sister brought you here today. And I prayed for you. And God saved you, did he not? Did the Lord save you when we prayed today? Yes. And you said you couldn't keep nothing on your stomach. When you would eat, you would regurgitate and it would come right back up. Come right back up. And after I prayed for you, you went out and ate some what? Prince fries. That good greasy food. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, give me some oil, just any type of oil from the platform. Amen. I'm, uh, now, I know the Bible says in Revelation that they repented not of their sorceries. That word sorcery in the Greek comes from the Greek word for makias, and it actually means a drug given portion. It means drugs. The word sorcery means drugs. God told me, and I've only done this four times in my entire ministry. God saved you today, but I know the devil's a sore loser because I know he'll come back and he'll tempt you with drugs. Amen. There's scars all over your body where you've been beaten and crushed and cut. Well, the devil's try to destroy you. But here's what the Holy Ghost, just as sure as my name is Woody Leon Martin, God told me to anoint your tongue. I want you to stick your tongue out. I, I clean my tongue, my finger, to put on your tongue because I want to be sanitary as I can. And this is not as bad as Jesus because Jesus spit on them. I decree by faith in the living God that you'll never crave drugs, that you'll lose your taste for drugs as long as you live. You'll never, 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 never desire drugs again in Jesus' name. Raise your hands up. Hallelujah. In the name of oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody thank God for saving this girl, delivering her. Is there four children? How many kids you got? I ain't got none. You ain't got none? I see four people. Four people. Four people that have been around you and they've been a, a bad influence. They're, they're, they're a bad influence. And the reason I said children, because some of them are like uh, teens and 19 and 20, and this is probably where you're being getting your drugs from. Yes. Huh? Yes. God says these four people that have been a bad influence to you, God says he's going to anoint your tongue to tell them about Jesus, and God's going to save them. Saith the Lord. Somebody say thank you. Somebody say thank you. Sister Story, can you give your testimony in 60 seconds? Come right quickly. Come up. Come right here. Amen. 
Amen. Tell them right quickly what the Lord did. Okay. When you was here in October, you told me that um, the Lord had healed my brokenness and that uh, my life was going to, uh, the shattered piece was going to fall into place and that I wasn't going to be making 50000 but I was going to be making 60000 So, for, per year. So I went and I... And I give you a date? By December 27th this year. Sunday night, this coming Sunday night, I'm going to be preaching 12 things that God's going to be doing in 1998. I'm going to give you in written form these 12 things that God spoke to me when I was in holy consecration unto the Lord. For one each month of the year of 1998, God's going to do 12 things for you. And I'm going to give you that on uh, Sunday night. I'll be preaching in, in the morning here at the chapel at 10 o'clock. And I'm going to lay my hands on you for the gifts of the Spirit to be operative in your life. If you want the gifts of the Spirit operating in your life, be here in the morning at 10. Sunday night, I'm preaching those 12 things. You don't have to take notes. I'm going to give it to you. And you can circle it off with your pencil every month that God does one of these things for you. I speak as a prophet of God, and God's going to do it. Monday night, we're going to take a prophetic look for the year of 1998. I'm going to show you, tell you some things that God showed me for 1998. We're going to look prophetically into the year. Read Psalms 98 before you come to that service. Read Psalms 98 for the year of 98. Clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now I want you to start over. Okay. When you was here in October, you told me that the Lord had healed my brokenness and that my life, the shattered pieces of my life was going to fall back into place. Everything was going to fall into place. And it was like a puzzle with three pieces missing. And that I wasn't going to be making, by December 27th, you didn't know what that date meant, but that by then I wasn't going to be making 50000 but 60000 a year. And you didn't know that I had just went and asked for a raise on my job. And I told them, they told me to name the number. And I had named 50000 but I had told the Lord that I wanted to be making 60000 but you didn't know that. And so um, in November, I had, they I had sent a limo for me and flew me to this certain place, and I had an interview. And they told me that the base salary for this job, the base salary, was $60,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But they asked me what did I want to make. Hallelujah. And they named, I named a higher range than that. And they gave me the range that I asked for, and they called me the Christmas, well, Christmas Eve, it was final. Was it, yeah, Christmas Eve. They called me, she called and wished me season's greetings and told me my drug and nap test analysis was done. And I went on my job and testified. I said, well, I'm going to prove God. And I told people about it, about the man of God, and they're going to come to church. And, um, you know, not only was I going to get the, the base salary, 60000 but I have 10% bonuses every quarter stock options, retirement plan, just a wonderful medical benefits, and I work from home, travel, just, it's just the job from heaven. You work in your own home? They set me an office, they give, they pay for the equipment that I need. And you mean you don't have no traffic to fight and drive two hours to get the job and two hours to get back? No, no traffic? No traffic. You mean you can actually sit there in your robe if you want to? Hallelujah! And drink your own coffee? Glory! At your own leisure time? At my own leisure. And make 60000 plus? Yes. Get out of here, girl. <laughs> Somebody say, look at God. My brother right back here with this gray jacket on. Stand up. Stand out in the aisle here. Have you ever been to Canada? God says you're going back. You're going to go back to Canada. And there's going to be a transformation in Canada that's going to change and revolutionize your life. Things are going to be changed. It's going to be like a birthing. And I know you're saved, you love God. But God says when you go back to Canada, 
And I don't know when this will be. It may be this year. It, it will be within these, the next three years. But this is Woody Martin speaking. I believe, me personally, it will be this year. But God says the sooner that the plans are worked out, the sooner that the manifestation that God has in store for you will come forth. And I hear the Lord saying it will be a prosperous journey. It will be a prosperous journey. And God says the spirit of entrepreneurship is going to come up on you and God's going to give you creative ideas to make money. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with making money. Amen. Amen. God says your bills are going to be eradicated, uprooted, and cast out because the Lord said he's going to make you the head and not the tail. sha ta 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 for I've laid my hand upon you, saith God. Now, this is the Lord speaking. I said a while ago, that's me speaking about it being in three years. God said the year of 98 will be the year of opportunity for you. The year of 98 will be the year of opportunity. And there have been doors in the past that have been shut before you but God said he's opening the door that no man can shut saith God my anointing shall come upon thee and you shall be the head and not the tail saith the Lord and the white yes you you got uh, USA Nations Bank come to me Amen. When God gets through here, you're going to own the bank. I'll tell you what I see as you're coming to me. I hear the Lord say, you're rolling in the dough. But God says, you're rolling in the dough. But the dough I see is like bread. Like you say what? I'm a man of that dominoes. You make pizza. Yeah. I guess he's rolling in the dough then. You know, God has a sense of humor. Somebody say, God has a sense of humor. Somebody say, rolling in the dough, working at dominoes. So you work at Domino's. <laughs> so you rolling in the dough, ain't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody needs any dough, this man's got it. I hear the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The Lord says you're like Cephas. Peter in the Bible, his name was Cephas, or a little rock, a small stone or a rock. His name was Peter. And God said he's going to make a rock out of you. You're going to, the business opportunity will be offered to you. I don't know if it's through dominoes or whom, but God says the spiritual side of this that you are going to roll in the dough not the dough that you need to make uh, pizzas with, but I'm talking about bread, money, honey. Amen. 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 Opportunities, and God says 98 will be your year of opportunity. Amen. The spirit of entrepreneurship will come up on you, and you will roll in the dough, not physically from dominoes, but I'm talking about money from the hand of God. Because praise brings the victory. Praise brings the victory. And God says you're going to be like Peter in the Bible. You're going to be like a rock. Hallelujah. There will be those that will waver to the left and to the right. But he said you're going to be like Peter. You're going to be like a rock. Amen. Hallelujah. That you're not going to waver. And that the dough is going to come through. Mm -mm -mm. You know this man? You need to get to know him because he can loan you some money. <laughs> the lady just told me his name is Peter. Say what? What 
What's your name? Peter. Are you a member of this church? I don't know nothing about the finances of this church, but you're going to be one of the leading tithers in this church. I don't know who, who the number one tither. I'm sure they got plenty of God robbers around here. But you're going to be the number one tither because the spirit of opportunity, the year of opportunity. Nine is the number of spiritual application for the nine gifts of the spirit. Eight and 98 means the new beginning. And God says there's going to be a new beginning, a new anointing for the year 98. And the Lord says the devil can't stop that which he has ordained, saith God. lady on that camera God has a word for you if you'll make your way down from the camera God has a word for you that camera will operate by itself till you get this because I tell you what I'm supposed to tell you right now you'll fall off of that thing for you to watch my television she's up on a platform hallelujah stand up here You've been praying for, look like a sister. Stand out here. You've been praying for someone. Looks like a sister. I don't know if it's her, it's named Louise, somebody named Louise. You're Louise. Yes. Oh, Shababa. I hear the Holy Ghost say, He's heard your prayer. Oh, yes. Hey, ka ta 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 Mm. Ooh, sha na 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 Micaiah. And for you, I see the healing light of Jesus coming over your body, going down through the, into your hips. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? The, I see the healing power of God going down into your hips. Mm. I see God healing the, the high blood. Also for your sister. She called on an Amakaya. There's been a blood disease. God says in the Brown family. Huh? Me. There's. I'm Louise Brown. My husband's name is Brown. We got together. My son is at a junior. They own drugs and doing everything. And it's just really, you know what God has really given me. I prayed and prayed. My sister, Lita Stalin, that got the church here. We are all members here. Wonderful. There ain't no better place in Atlanta than the lighthouse. God says, your family, my sister, 
the Brown family, the Lord has heard your prayer. And that what you make happen for others, God's going to make happen for you. You've been more concerned about your sister, and you've just kind of ignored the symptoms of the pain and the sickness in your body. God, I see the healing power of God coming through your hips, down through your legs, and God says, you're healed. Re there it is. Receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God says he has great things in store for you. God says he has a job for you at J-O-B. You need employment. You need a good paying job. But it's going to be in the area that you have been trained in. Hallelujah. Amen. I, and I, I'm not opposed to flipping hamburgers. That's good for people making minimum wage at these fast food restaurants. But I'm going to prophesy to you before you leave the window, check your order. <laughs> because when you get to where you stay, you're going to find that the fries ain't there. You're a burger short. Hello. That's a word of knowledge. Check your order before you drive away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this is going to, a, a job of employment, all this is going to come to play, place and it's going to take, it's not going to take God a long time, but I hear the Lord saying between now and October the 1st of 1998, say what? That's my birthday. He caught out by shot. God says between now and, and I'm not, uh, God says, and is that, that right? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I've got some personal stuff to tell her. This is a Nunya prophecy. Ain't none your business. What I'm telling her. Amen. God says he's going to give you the job in the area that you're trained in between now and October the 1st. And God is going to make you the head and not the tail. And what you lay your hands to do, the Lord God is going to bless it. She's still praising God. Isn't that wonderful? Go ahead, Sister Brown. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands and say thank you. The Lord says he is pleased with your walk and with your talk and what you're doing for him. And God says there's nothing going to come between you and your, the blessing that the Lord God has given you. Go ahead and praise him. And God says he's placed someone in Somebody help her praise God. I said, somebody praise the Lord in this place. Do you receive what I said to you? You receive that? Yes, I do. You hadn't consulted me or sent me a note or a letter or anything saying, pray about this or, or nothing, have you? No, I haven't. All right. You take what God's given you and you run with it. Glory to God, and you'll be the head and not the tail. Get back on that camera. Somebody say thank you. Brother Roundtree, come here, brother. God says you've been faithful to his house. You've been faithful to the things of God. Many a time you wanted to be in here and you've been outside patrolling the grounds and the parking lot and God says while you have watched over his property God is watching over you and even though the enemy has come against your finances and you've had 
dire financial needs in 19 and 97. 98 is going to be your year of jubilee. 98 is going to be your year of jubilee. There's times that you didn't have the right money to do by your kids what you wanted to do. And you did the best you could. I'm not putting you down. But you did the best you could. But the lack of finances, you was hindered to do what you wanted to do for your family, like birthdays and special occasions. I'm not embarrassing you, but I speak prophetically to you. And invariably, we think when we hear this, how is this going to happen? We try to figure it out. You don't need to figure it out. And you don't have to wait for Ed McMahon to ring your doorbell either. Amen. God says the year of 98 is the year of opportunity for you. The winds of adversity has come against you in this year of 97. But 98 is your year. Everybody say 98 is my year. Before you sit down. This is the year Israel's 50th birthday. May 14th, 1948, Israel became an independent nation. This is Israel's 50th birthday. Everybody say 50th birthday. I am decreeing that this year is going to be your spiritual jubilee. 50 in Deuteronomy 25 was the year of jubilee. Every 50th year, the people that had their land taken away from them, it was given back to them. Those that are slaves were set free. It was the year of Jubilee. And God says this is going to be your year of Jubilee, say the Lord. Hey! The Lord instructed me tonight to challenge you to give $50 in this offering. This, I am decreeing, just like Israel's spiritual birthday of 50. And you can read uh, uh, Leviticus 25 and read about the year of Jubilee. The land that didn't produce uh, foods, they had productive harvests in the year of Jubilee. The land that was barren and everything that was taken away was given back. Hallelujah. And this is the 50th spiritual birthday of Israel and God told me this night to challenge you and to join me in giving fifty dollars for your year of Jubilee somebody say my year of Jubilee amen glory to God now I'm gonna ask you somebody say tonight now I know this is after Christmas but I also know Santa Claus didn't get all your money <laughs> 